Hi, Mr. Dressel. I'm Tony. Thanks for meeting with me. My pleasure. How can I help you? We're working on a school assignment researching what transportation will be like in a hundred years. We thought the best place to start would be in the past. That's a great place to begin. Can you tell me when and where transportation began? Well, the first form of transportation was by foot, or more commonly known as walking. Yeah, I know all about walking. <laughs> At some point, boats were used and animals were domesticated. But the real transportation breakthrough hadn't happened quite yet. Breakthrough? Like the invention of the driver's license? <laughs> Not quite yet. Archaeologists believe that the very first step towards man-made transportation began in either Mesopotamia or Asia, sometime around 4,000 to 3,500 BC, with the invention of the wheel. Was the invention of the car next in the timeline? Well, it was really the invention of the steam engine in the late 18th century that made mass transportation a standard. The early trains were slow and they were often very dangerous, but as locomotives improved, they really became important to our steadily growing and very young country, especially considering we didn't have a very good road system. I understand how trains help people travel long distances, but how did people in the city get around? Well, there was walking, and then there were horse cars and trolleys, and finally subways. But then in the 1880s and the 1890s, they discovered the bicycle, which was great because they could go where they wanted to and when they wanted to. So they had wheels, but they didn't have wheels. Right, they didn't have wheels as in cars. <laughs> Wasn't the car invented around the turn of the century? Well, actually, in France, Nicholas Joseph Cunot invented a car as early as 1769. But since it was powered by steam, most people don't consider it really an automobile. But in the 1880s, Gottlieb Daimler and Carl Benz in Germany invented a light, practical automobile engine that really ushered in the era of the modern automobile. How has the car changed over time? Well, this is a 192 Rambler. It's basically a powered buggy built using the same sort of technology they used to build bicycles. And this is a 1915 Dodge. It's basically an improved version of the Model T Ford. It was a front engine, rear drive, open touring car intended for a rural market. Well, why did the style of cars change? In the 1920s, people's lifestyles began to change. We were no longer a country defined as rural, and people began demanding more comfortable cars. Take a look at this 1929 Nash. It shows a shift away from open cars. The car was no longer just a fair weather option. It was now a necessity, and therefore it needed to be enclosed. Wow, this one looks different. It's a 1934 Chrysler Airflow. It's the first mass produced aerodynamic car design. By 1934, engineers had discovered just how much difference air resistance made on car performance. We learned about airflow in the case of the challenging flight and how important it is on drag. That's right, and airflows really changed the way cars looked. Transportation has sure changed throughout history. Yes, as transportation improves, it's easier to live and work farther apart. If you walk to work, you're not likely to live more than about a mile away from where you work. But if you've got a car, you can drive 30 or more miles to work. And with the invention of the airplane in 1903 by the Wright brothers, we can live even farther away and take vacations to faraway places. And thanks, Mr. Dressel. This has been a lot of help. You're welcome. Feel free to enjoy the exhibits. There's a lot more to see.